Hello, and welcome to The National Popular Vote Explained, by me, Pop Vote. Some people love the Electoral College, others prefer the popular vote, but most don't know about the third option, an option that fixes the problems with our current electoral system without abolishing the Electoral College. It's called the National Popular Vote Bill, and it's only kind of what it sounds like. You see, when most people talk about the popular vote, they talk about it as opposed to the Electoral College. Some argue that we should abolish the Electoral College, and instead institute direct elections because the Electoral College doesn't always elect the candidate with the most votes. Others love the Electoral College, as it gives increased importance to smaller states, something direct elections don't do. But here's the thing. Both these views are wrong. The Electoral College and the popular vote can coexist. And, well, our founding fathers probably imagined them as complementary ideas, each one strengthening the other, and in turn, our country. Let me explain. The Constitution establishes the Electoral College, stating that each state shall appoint, in such manner as the legislator thereof may direct, a number of electors, equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in Congress. The second part of that statement, a highlighted part, is what you learned about the Electoral College in school. Each state gets a predetermined number of votes for president. This number is simply the number of senators the state has, which is two, plus the number of representatives the state has, which is determined by the population of the state. This means that big old Texas with its two senators and 36 representatives gets 38 electors, while little Rhode Island, which also has two senators, but only two representatives, gets four electors. Which is still not a lot, but it's more representation than Rhode Island would have gone with direct elections. So, you understand the second part of this statement. But the first part is where the interesting stuff happens. You see, the Founding Fathers wanted to give states the ability to choose their votes for president, in such manner as the legislator thereof may direct. In other words, without input from the federal government. This means that if states don't like how we elect the president, they can change our electoral system. No constitutional amendment needed. And, well, most states don't like our current winner-take-all system because it destroys the original intention of the Electoral College to give smaller states more power and instead gives the power to swing states. Not to mention that the winner-take-all system often leads to wacky election outcomes. This is where the National Popular Vote Bill comes in. You see, the National Popular Vote Bill would fix the problems with the winner-take-all system without abolishing the Electoral College or amending the Constitution. And the whole thing's pretty simple. Here's how it works. Right now, almost every state operates under the winner-take-all system. Each winner-take-all state has passed a bill that gives all that state's presidential electors to the winner of the statewide popular vote. Remember, States can choose how to allocate their electoral votes because the Constitution allows states to choose how they appoint electors. By the same token, states may change how they choose electors at any time. So states can pass the National Popular Vote Bill. By passing the National Popular Vote, all states are saying is that they will give all their presidential electors to the winner of the nationwide popular vote instead of the statewide popular vote. But hold your horses before shouting democracy from the rooftops, because the law doesn't go into effect until states containing at least 270 electoral votes, the number necessary to guarantee the presidency to the winner of the nationwide popular vote, have signed on to the bill. This means that as soon as states containing 270 electoral votes have passed the national popular vote, the presidency will be guaranteed to the winner of the nationwide popular vote. No longer will the winner-take-all system hinder the Electoral College. Now, the national popular vote is already well on its way to becoming a reality. The bill is already 61% to completion. Ten states and Washington, D.C. have already signed the bill into law. For the relatively short amount of time the national popular vote has existed, its momentum has been truly astounding. Small states support the bill because the winner-take-all system gives swing states the power the Electoral College was supposed to give smaller states. Large states support the bill because the winner-take-all system forces candidates to ignore big states in favor of swing states. A majority of Republicans support the bill. A majority of Democrats support the bill. The young and the old both support the bill. Probably most heartwarming of all is the fact that the majority of swing state voters support the national popular vote. 
Mind you, under the national popular vote, swing state voters would give up their monopoly on presidential election attention, instead opting to share their electoral power with the country as a whole. It just goes to show you that Americans really do value the integrity of their democracy above themselves. And that's what the national popular vote's about. Restoring the integrity of our democracy the right way. Greetings, Internet. Like most things on YouTube, this video was posted in the past. If you'd like to learn about the progress of the national popular vote since this video was posted, click up here for an update. I've also put a link to the text of the national popular vote bill in the description. It's only two pages long, so I highly recommend checking it out for yourself. Seriously, go. Also, if you like facts, links are in the description. See you next time!